Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Duggan with IGN, and I'm here with... Tate Phoebe. And we are here to discuss Hearthstone, specifically the Blackrock Mountain Adventure coming out, and we are going to do a full set analysis. So welcome to part one of that, where we're going to discuss our own personal top five lists for straight up the most powerful game-changing cards for our money. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Uh, all right, so my first card was Quick Shot. Yep, I could see that. I mean, this card enables some ridiculous combos. I actually had this as my fifth before I pulled it out at the last <laughs> minute. Uh, the reason I took it out is because over time, Face Hunter's gotten so refined, I think it's going to be hard to find the card to pull out to put this in. So I'm not sure if this sets Hunter over the top, because you think of it like Wolf Rider, which is the 3-1 charge which leaves a minion on the board. Face Hunter tends to rely on minions doing multiple turns of damage. This just does that one, but it is a strictly better Dark Bomb. So That's true, you know, and it, it does require your hand to be empty, so it is, of course, incentivizing that Face Hunter gameplay. I'm sure we'll see it in play, uh, and I'm sure it will probably replace Arcane Shot uh, if that is still being used, but Face Hunter or just Aggro Hunter in general has, has been a huge point of contention in the Hearthstone meta for a long time, starting out, of course, with Unleash the Hound, yep. the Undertaker Hunter, so... Hopefully they're trying to do face hunter, but they're trying to do it on their terms. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, this doesn't really change the way hunter is played, which is kind of what you hope to see out of an expansion. But I think it's going to be good. Okay, next up is Drachnoid Crusher. So I think this card has potential to be really good. Um, at, as a six for six six, it's pretty vanilla. But the plus three plus three, yes, it puts it in big game hunter range. But I'm thinking of this in terms of handlock. And I'm also thinking of it in terms of decks like Zoo or a Rush deck. Like, this is just such a huge minion to deal with. It could potentially absorb the big game Hunter to free up your big late game minions. For sure. Um, we'll see if that's actually how it pans out, but 6 for a 9-9 nine nine is outrageous. Right, especially when you take into consideration that uh, Boulder Fist Ogre is a... 6-7 six, for 6, so you're only getting one more health there. And the other synergy I love with this is uh, it's kind of more of, of a thematic narrative synergy and not necessarily something that Macy play, but if there is kind of a dragon deck, I'm sure Alex Straza will be in it, and uh, Alex Straza, of course, being a dragon as well and setting their health to 15, kind of enabling this card, and of course that's not the most mana-efficient combo by any means. However, a cool little touch there for sure. Yeah, I think it has a lot of potential. Um, it's much easier to activate than something like Druid of the Fang, which uh, requires a beast on board to become a huge minion. Absolutely. All right, my number four pick for the most powerful Hearthstone card of Blackrock Mountain is Hungry Dragon. Yep. <laughs> we, we, we touched on this a little bit before. Uh, so I, initially when this card first came out, I ran over to your side of the office and I said, did you see Hungry Dragon? And you were like, oh my God. So I guess we were both at a consensus that this card was powerful, um, especially because summoning a one-cost minion for your opponent isn't always a bad thing, especially when you take into consideration kind of the the Blackrock Mountain theme of uh, this card costs one less if minions have died this turn, so you can ram one of your minions into that one, or you can use something like Mind Control Tech to make it your own. Um, so I guess what has changed since I initially spoke to you uh, in your opinion about this card, and I guess what do you what do you foresee the downfall of a card like this being? So I think it's really good. A five six for four is ridiculous, pretty much in any state. But with the prevalence of aggro and aggro being so popular, giving your opponent one extra minion to essentially attack you with the next turn. I, I'm thinking, and when you're facing that face hunter, and you're at 18 health on turn four. You put this out, it doesn't stop them from attacking. It doesn't prevent, and it potentially gives them an extra minion to attack with. They can just bypass it. It only trades with one of the minions on their board. So I can see aggro being the thing that keeps a card like this in check. And I'm not sure there's enough tools that were introduced to slow down aggro. But I suppose, kind of what, what about this card being used in an aggro deck? I mean, it is a four cost, and then it's a five, six. You're getting huge board presence for yeah. that. You're summoning a one cost minion for your opponent, which in a worst case scenario is something like Flame Imp. Um, but even then, if you're an aggro deck, then, then you probably have their board hopefully clear of all the taunt minions. So summoning a one cost for them, not that big a deal, especially when like turn three with a coin, you play a five, six. That seems pretty good to me. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a card that's going to, it w could define the meta. Right. 
Um, that's the only area that gave me pause. I just didn't want to jump all in, assuming this is kind of the next target for nerf before we've actually seen it, because <laughs> there is that counterplay that might right. hold it back a little bit. You know, bit. and piloted shredder is really good. So uh, that's that's a that's a four drop, and uh, that is certainly prevalent in the meta. It has a lot of play in with mechs. So we'll see what this does, and we'll see if dragon deck is even kind of thing. I have my reservations about whether or not it will actually kind of um, come to fruition the way I think Blizzard wants it to, design-wise. But anyway, Tate's number four pick is... Volcanic Drake. Wow. I actually, uh, wow. Okay. All right. Shoot. I, so my, these next four, I could not figure out what order to put them in. And this one just happened to fall slightly behind the other ones based, based on how excited I am for them. But this, I mean, you can kind of think of this card as if you have any minions you trade, then two minions die. So it's a six, four for four, which is really good. But anytime you work with kind of mana reduction effects, you can gain so much value. So a card like this pairs really well with like Paladin Board Clears, mm -hmm. which can enable it. it or Muster for Battle, yep. which gives you a bunch of minions. To a bunch of, of tokens. I can see this even flowing into something like Zoo, which is board control related. Implosion lends itself right. really well to this. Uh, the area I'm most excited to see this card is in something like Handlock, where you can use Shadow Flame to destroy a minion, wipe the opponent's minions, and then get Volcanic Drakes for one two three mana like that just seems like so much value that is a lot of value i didn't e i actually didn't even think about its applications in handlock i was kind of more stuck on the idea of again a paladin muster deck running maybe dragon consort which is new yep. uh this set but yeah in handlock this would potentially be absolute trouble but i guess the thing that held me back from putting it on, on my list and i'll admit that it's not on the rest of my list is the four health for six Six. Obviously, you're going to pay less for that, but still, six four is great. There are a lot of minions that have four attack, though. Yep. I'm really interested to see if some of these cost reduction for death on neutral minions can bring something like Twisted Nether back in the meta too. Like, there's, there's certainly room to beyond just uh, board wipes. There's the trading minions, but there's a lot of opportunities. Hellfire into this to wipe a board and play it afterwards. There's just so much potential. Doomsayer too, I think, is, is something that may resurface probably sooner than Twisting Nether, because I just yeah. Twist, Twisting Nether has never really been good, despite it looking awesome. Anyway, okay, so the top three: Emperor Tharusen, and I, Thar, Tharusen. I googled Tharusen. Tharusen. I googled. Well, I don't know, but I googled pronunciation guides all over the place, and of course, I remember this guy from uh, BRD in uh, Vanilla. So. Anyway, he is a card that I have my doubts about, but that being said, he just seems so good. Yeah. Um, I think this is the best card in the set. Is okay. Well, so, I don't want uh, to say anymore because I, I want to see what your number one pick is. So maybe it yeah, will be this I, one. I mean, we're gonna, uh, we might as well go through it right now. Okay. The reasons this card is ridiculous. Um, every card you have in your hand represents a reduction in mana that you've saved. So if you have four cards in your hand, you can think of this as two mana for a 5-5. Five five because of that mana you're saving for later turns. Uh, it doesn't work out quite that way, but that's how it p might persist in a game. It also enables combos just way earlier than you'd expect, and some that don't exist. Uh, you think of it in terms of just a burst mage. If you reduce your fire two fireballs by one mana apiece, you can double fireball, double frostbolt, ice lance, ice lance. It just creates some outrageous combos that otherwise would not be possible. And so that's what makes me so excited about this card is the surprise factor. You don't know what's in the opponent's hand, but if you're playing a druid and they drop this, like you mentioned, on if this was innervated out on turn four, you have to start worrying about getting comboed on turn six. Yeah, right. Like it's It's insane. That's true. And, I, you know, I think the thing that held me back from putting this higher on my list was it's a similar scenario to Kel'Thuzad where that card on paper looks incredibly powerful. And then in practice, he's just such a huge target and he's a must remove. The, the only neutral minion that even really competes with this that sees play is Sylvanas. Right. But this affects your hand for the rest of the game. Right, so, or at least for the rest of... Or I at mean, least those t cards that you have, as long as you have them. Right, but I kind of want to save the rest of this discussion for when we will probably get back to it on your list. Sure. Okay, all right. So your number three pick... Uh, Dragon <laughs> Consort. I'm, I'm sure this has to be somewhere on yours, too. This card is outrageous. I mean, all you need to know is 
seven mana Ysera, three mana Azure Drake. Like this enables so much ridiculous value. Or, that, or Chromagus the following turn. Yeah, I mean, it's so notable that it that effect isn't till the end of this turn. It's not, um, I, I'm trying to think, I'm blanking on the other card that reduces the cost for that turn. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I will pull it up on the screen right now, but we should point out that that card only does it for this turn, as where this persists throughout your turn, and even if you haven't drawn the card yet it's still going to give you the effect. So that there's an innate value in there. This is the card that if there's a class that's going to do the dragons, it's got to be Paladin. Like this card enables dragons in such a meaningful way. Um, and the f we haven't even talked about the fact that it's a 5-5 five, five body for 5, which is it's nothing great. to scoff at. Yeah, right. Um, it's a little bit above curve for class cards, but that being said, it's pretty much on curve with... The neutral pool and it's it's fantastic i mean it's really good it gives you fantastic board presence uh on turn four with the coin or turn five and then that effect obviously you're only going to be using this card if you have synergies with it in your deck so that effect you're going to get some value out of that too yeah, for sure absolutely okay top two my pick for the number two spot for most powerful card in black rock mountain goes to chromagus <laughs> oh interesting I, I, I can think of some great synergies with your, this card, but I want to hear your thoughts on okay, it. Okay, so um, initially when I first looked at it, I thought Kel'Thuzad, because it's an 8-cost 6-8. Eight, it has an awesome effect. It um, impacts the game in a very significant way. I should get out of the way straight away that it dodges Big Game Hunter, which is another plus. But the reason why I think it's so incredibly awesome, there's that period in control matches where you get to the end and you're relying on a top deck and you're looking at the amount of cards your opponent has, looking at the amount of cards you have. This card is such value in that late stage. Against aggro, I question whether it's good, but hopefully you've built up enough board presence by turn 8 or turn 7 with the coin to have this card be impactful. Now, the huge downside of this card, and I would be remiss if I didn't say that you give your opponent a chance to remove it before the effect even triggers. Here's here's where I see this work. Um, and I, I don't have this on my list. I think this card's really interesting. It's Kel'Thuzad, but it gives you an opportunity to take advantage of it. On an empty board, this is more meaningful than Kel'Thuzad. Um, I think Priest is a great one for it because Power Word Shield gives you two cards. If you have other card draw minions already on the board, Nacolite of Pain, a Loot Horde, or something like that, um, if you already s if you set up the card draw for it, I can see it being really valuable. The reason I don't have it is I don't know if it offers enough at this stage in the game. Like when you're competing with a card like Ragnaros, which affects the board immediately, um, is this something you're going to play with? Does drawing those cards at that point do enough? Anyway, so yeah, why don't you introduce us to? Yeah, my my number two card was Gang Up. Which, I should disclose, I'm a, I love Rogue. It's my favorite class in the game. And the reason I kind of fell in love with this card is I think it enables two versions of Rogue to get better that don't see play. Um, the first being Heavy Control Rogue. And it's worth noting that you can choose an opponent's minion. So you can, like, I just love the options this card brings. Like, there's so many creative ways to use it. Like, the obvious one is... They play something huge, so you use Gang Up on it. You get three copies of yeah, Ragnaros. Yeah, so it should be stated before we move further, this isn't just your own minions. You can target any yep. minions with it. Shuffle those into your deck. Yeah, you get three copies of Tyrion, something like that. That stuff's really cool. Um, but there's little things, like adding three or three more piloted Shredders to your deck has so much value. Uh, the reason I'm super excited about this is I think it can finally make Mill Rogue work. You use this, add... Potentially between Oracle, two maybe? gang ups, six cold light oracles to your deck. <laughs> um, and then those draw two cards. So when you shuffle those minions into your deck, you actually are getting to them fast as well. And then Rogue also has Sprint, which if you're shuffling cards that you need into your deck, you have a way to dig them out. I just think this changes that class in a way that could be really interesting. Yeah, the question is, is the loss in tempo that you get from playing this card the downfall of it right uh which we'll have to see but i cannot wait to try to make a mill deck as soon as this all comes right out. i am going to jump to your number one pick because i think i know what it is and we had a bit of discussion beforehand on it uh well i already revealed it but okay. we can jump to it i mean we we touched on it already uh through Zian. um i don't know if there's that much more to add other than any card that makes your cards cheaper 
it has innate value. And this could be a default six drop to get you the ability to empty your hand at earlier stages. Right, no, I think we touched on everything that, that I wanted to cover about this card earlier. I'm really excited to see the applications and I'm sure there will be quite a few. Um, now the next card, my number one pick, Fire Guard Destroyer. Yeah. So uh, the reason why I love this card, um, number one, the value is obvious. So it's at worst a four, six for four, at best a seven, six for four. You can't argue with that. That is immense board presence that early for very little investment. Obviously it does have an overload one for the following turn, but the deck that I would put this card in is the Ancestral Spirit Earth Elemental deck, which basically- Just a heavy overload deck. Right, so it's, it's a heavy overload deck. The idea is to kind of get out your Fire Guard Destroyer early and then Ancestral Spirit, and then you combine that with Reincarnation to kind of enable a combo there. So if you roll a four on this, you have two seven sixes on the board um, after pulling that combo. And I guess the linchpin, the cornerstone of this deck that really makes it work in my mind now is a card that didn't make it to my top five list, but I still think is worthy of kind of a call out. And that is Lava Shock. Yep. Um, and so I learned something about Lava Shock last night when I was doing research uh, that I did not know. Um, and I guess the first question I, I asked you when we were talking about Lava Shock when it was first released was, uh, does this unlock the mana that I have on this turn, or does it do it for the next turn? And it's all it turns all out it does crystals. it for both. It's right, so which, much value. Yeah, huge value, especially with a heavy overload deck. And I don't think any deck uses overload uh, to its maximum potential the way that the Earth Elemental and now hopefully Fire Guard Destroyer Ancestral Spirit deck does. I think this is a great card. I mean, the what's important to note is it doesn't affect your turn six, which is kind of the linchpin of Shaman. Uh, like Earth Elemental, which overloads you for turn six, which ruins Fire Elemental. Yeah, Fire Elemental, which is so important. Which is the card for Shaman. This fits that curve really well. If you play it on turn four, you're overloaded for turn five. So you look at the Shaman curve, if something like coin out uh, Feral Spirits on turn two, you have a worthless turn three. You get this on turn four. I mean, it fits really well with a lot of the overload mechanics as far as its pacing. I think this card's gonna win and lose games based on that battle cry roll. Like rolling that seven six on turn three, I unless they have big game, it's gonna be very hard to overcome. Right, um, and then that that is like a four cost way of drawing out big game hunter is a fantastic way to then set yourself up for an earth elemental. You know, uh, I see big game hunter photoshopped into every photo of Hearthstone cards and in comments and everything, but there are so many targets for him now. It's completely a viable strategy to just overwhelm your opponent with bombs and and they will not have the answers for removal, maybe. Um, but anyway, Fire Guard Destroyer, my pick for number one. Uh, your pick for number one being uh, the Emperor. So that was our picks for the top five most powerful Hearthstone cards in Black Rock Mountain. Let us know what you think in the comments. What's your number one most powerful Black Rock Mountain card? And for everything Hearthstone, keep it right here on IGN.